Hey, Matt Skinner here. Thanks for joining us at Matt Skinner TV. I get this question all the time. I'm going to answer the big question. The big question is all about, hey, Matt, where are we in the market cycle? Are we at the top of the market? Are we at the bottom of the market? Are we at the midway of the market? Like, where the heck are we? What should I be doing now in real estate to make some money? What should I be doing now to position myself for the next part of the market cycle? So I want to answer that for you today. This is, what, this is what we're going to address today because this is a super important, important question. So let's talk about that. First, I want, to rec I want you to recognize that if we were investing in stock market, right, the stock market does this. You look at a chart and they just go da, 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 and sometimes there are spikes and they get small and they spike and they do all kinds of stuff like that. That's what the stock market looks like, right? The real estate market is a much slower moving ship. And the real estate market looks something like this. Right? A bunch of lumps. Can you see that all right? In fact, what I'm going to suggest inside of this game is that the real estate market actually looks more like this. Because over the history of these great United States, we have consistently had an upward trend in real estate values over time. The reason for that is because from the inception of the colonies to the present day, we have had population growth consistently every single day, every single year, we get larger as a population. What happens when there's more people needing to occupy the same amount of land? The land value goes up. It's just a matter of supply and demand. So over time, just recognize in our country, our population consistently goes up with birth rate and with immigration. And so we consistently have a more and more people demanding to take occupancy in the same amount of places. So we continue to build, we continue to grow, and our real estate market continues to thrive over time. Now, inside of this upward trajectory, we have the ebbs and flows of the marketplace. We have our booms and our busts. We have our booms and our bust cycles. And some states and some cities boom and bust at different uh, rates. Uh, California, for example, booms and busts in, in radical swings, right? Other parts of the country uh, have more of a moderate uh, swing in the marketplace and they, they cycle a little bit differently. So in that regard, real estate in general is typically driven by the local markets. It's driven by population growth. It's driven by these things. Now we had a unusual phenomenon in 2007 when the banks began to announce their insolvency. We had rampant fraud. We had rampant uh, criminal activity inside our financial system. The big banks, the central banks came in to bail out this whole system and, and we find in a book that I highly recommend called Je uh, Creature from Jekyll Island, we find that this whole system was rigged to collapse. And so we want to be aware of that. And, uh, and that was an opportunity for the banks to take control of a lot of real estate. So check out that book. It's really powerful. Um, getting back to market cycles though, our markets go up and down over time. Over time, the American real estate market has gone up and it will continue to do so as long as we continue to have uh, a positive growth as far as our population goes. So the question becomes, what do we do to make money in real estate? So if you're looking at the long game and you just want to buy something or anything, it will go up over time just with inflation, right? The more cash that's printed, the value of real estate will go up because it's a commodity. So it'll go up with inflation. So a lot of people use real estate as a hedge against inflation. But that's kind of boring and that's kind of the slow game. That's not the way to, um, to really you know, make a fortune in real estate. That's a great way to park your cash and invest for the long term. I get asked all the time, man, why are people buying apartment assets in big cities at like two and three cap rates? And what we need to recognize is who's doing that? because right? it's happening. Chicago, San Francisco, LA, San Diego, one of the hottest apartment markets in the country, buying high quality A-class properties for ridiculous prices, two cap, three cap in some cases. They don't care about cash flow. You know what they care about? They've got so much cash on hand. These are large financial institutions like life insurance companies, uh, like pension funds. These are organizations that they're, they cannot lose their money. And so they believe by buying an apartment complex, 
and paying cash, whether it cash flows or not, it will just not lose, right? It will, that's their game, not to lose and to go up with inflation. So that's why large institutions buy apartments because that's a safe, secure, stable asset class that is very difficult to lose money at. It's almost impossible to have hundreds of tenants all move out on the same day, which provides these financial institutions safe, secure, stable assets to invest in, which are the same reasons we buy apartment buildings, safe, secure, stable assets to invest in. So we love that trend, but we like to do this in just a little bit different way. We do value add deals. We'll buy older properties that need some help, that need new management, that need some physical repairs. We'll buy them and, and physically and intentionally increase the value of the asset so we can make a great money to increase our equity, to increase our cash flow. And, uh, and take a stake in that. So let's get back to market, market cycle. So we have these markets that cycle, and I'll suggest we had a peak of market 2007. Everybody knows housing market was, all, was crazy. Everything was crazy. Everybody was you know, getting into the real estate game. In fact, one of the ways that you will notice that we're at the top of the market, here's a couple of telltale signs, top of market. Condos are being built everywhere. Condos are always the last asset to be brought and introduced to the marketplace. When people are building condos everywhere, it's top of market. When everybody you meet says they're a real estate investor, top of market. You get in an Uber, hey man, this, I just do this on a side, my real job is I'm a real estate investor. You go to Denny's and the waitress is like, here, here's my card, I buy houses. And you see signs on the freeway exits and things like that say, I buy houses, cash, or lease options for sale. Everybody's getting in, top of market. Two telltale signs top of market. When land is for sale everywhere, land, raw land, we're at the top of a, of, a, of a real estate market. And so this may happen different in different cities, right? Different timing, different areas, different cities. Because what drives a market forward, what drives the momentum of market is population growth. And the number one thing that drives population growth to anywhere, anywhere in the world, any city in the world, is job growth. People will move for better life, for better opportunity. Better opportunity means more jobs, more income, uh, uh, more resources at the end of the day, and less taxes and less regulation and less restriction on a person's ability, their freedom to grow and expand as a human. So people are moving in droves to places like Nashville, Tennessee, because it's, it has light restrictions on starting a business. They have one of the lowest tax bases in the country, property tax, income tax, all those things, super low tax base, especially relative to big cities like I'm from, Los Angeles. And there's job growth, right? So people are moving from other places to come and find a better opportunity. Earlier today, I had a conversation with a guy who immigrated from Russia, and he talked about his family and how they came to this country for a better life. Well, that same thing happens inside these great United States. In 2008, 2009, we, I moved from operating a business in Southern California, which was going straight down the tubes, overtaxed, overregulated, collapsing everywhere, to a land of milk and honey that we call Texas. Went to Texas, made a bunch of investments, and did really well, was able to elevate myself and my family out of the recession that was happening in California. So we can play these markets in different ways, but recognize that these booms and busts happen in every market, in every city, it just happen, can happen at different times. So in 2000, or I should say at the top of the market, the best position to be in is what? To be a seller, right? We wanna sell at the top of market. So we've been doing this over the last couple of years, liquidating assets. The development projects that we started several years ago are just coming online. We're starting to sell these assets. We've got a couple of uh, 10,000 square foot houses we're gonna be selling in Newport Harbor for 22, 24, 25, who knows, $30 million. We're just excited about the run on those. Um, we got some other houses that were just being completed. So in this market, we love to be having the completion of our development projects coming online for sale. We also like to have the completion of our renovated apartment assets coming up for sale. So a great place to be. We just started a fund called our Simple Growth Bond. It's a high yield real estate bond because 
some of the apartment assets that we're selling, right? We are, are we don't um, have as much deal flow right now because we're top of market, so we're not buying as much as we were, say, 10 years ago. 10 years ago, it was like a feeding frenzy, buying everything we possibly could. I'm gonna talk about that in just a second. But right now, we, we've given our investors the opportunity to, so that when we sell an apartment asset, they can put their cash into our high yield real estate bond, make a great interest rate while they wait, while we hunt for another great asset, for another uh, compound equity deal. So at the top of market, we wanna be sellers. At the bottom of the market, we wanna buy anything and everything that cash flows. If it cash flows, meaning if you're at the bottom of the market, it's the lowest price this asset will ever be, and it puts cash in your pocket, that's the time to buy. Buy it all, buy it everything. This is like a clearance sale at Nordstrom's. My girlfriend tells me that they don't have sales at Nordstrom's. So when they have a sale, it's like, it could be wild, it's crazy. It's like everybody goes after this opportunity to buy these, this great quality assets at a discount. And that's what we wanna do. So we wanna buy, 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 right? At this, mark, at this point in time. Now, I wanna point out, nobody really knows what the bottom is. So this is when everybody's afraid. Nobody's a real estate investor. When you're the real estate investor trying to buy everything at the bottom, people are gonna tell you you're fucking crazy, just like they've told me. You're nuts, you're crazy. What are you doing? Why would you go from California and go buy, and everything's collapsing, the sky is falling, this is madness, what are you doing? No, no, we're going to Texas and we're buying 200 units, 400 units, 1,000 units, we're gonna buy assets, the cash flow, and we're gonna ride the wave, ride the momentum up. Take the elevator to the top, baby. That's what we're gonna do. So then what happens? We've got two other cycles in the marketplace, right? We've got our, our trip down and we've got our trip up. So what does that look like? Well, in our trip downhill, this is a great time to be doing transactions. Now I meet house flippers and I meet people that are realtors and I meet people all, you know, that do all these things. And if you're flipping houses on the way up, Kind of a silly model in my opinion. Let me, let me demonstrate. So if you bought a house and the market's going up, maybe you buy a house for $100,000, you put in $25,000 and you go ahead and you sell it for, I don't know, let's just say 175. Let's say you sell it for 200. But guess what, after you sold it, it continues going up to 210, 220, 235, 245. Why would you sell an asset going up? This is what led me to get into the apartment business. I didn't want, I was fixing up houses at the bottom of the recession. Boom, 2008, 2009, right in here. And I said, I need to hang on to some of these assets. I need these assets to work for me. I want the momentum of the market to take my value, my equity stake, my balance sheet. I need, it to, I need the momentum of the market to take me on that ele elevator right up. And if I keep selling these houses, keep selling these buildings that I'm fixing up, I'm not gonna have, I'm gonna have nothing to show for it when we get back to the top of the market again, right? It's just transaction, boom, boom, boom. Do your transactions on the way down because when your speed of execution can beat the market, it's falling, right? So in that case, you buy a house for $100,000, you put $25,000 in, let's say you sell it for 150 or 175 and the market's still going down you, because you're able to complete that whole cycle, take a $100,000 house, turn it into a $175,000 house, you can do that in, in four, five, six months and turn, turn and burn, right? The people buying it, living in it, they, they don't care if the market goes to 170, 165, because they're gonna live in it for long term, right? They're not, looking, they're not buying an investment property at that point in time. They're buying some, a nice place to live and you've provided it for them. That's what you wanna do on the way down. You wanna do transactions, so flipping, buy, sell, buy, sell. Flipping contracts, buy, sell, buy, sell, getting in, getting out. You want to get in, you want to do process short sales. I did hundreds of short sale processing uh, during the last downward cycle, during a down, downward crash. Um, and you can be a, a real estate agent, it's a great, great um, place to be in a down cycle because you're just, you're, you don't have any risk. You're not riding the elevator down. You're not collapsing your balance sheet. You're just transacting fast, quick, quick, you know, jab, 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 get in, get out, and ride that market down. Conversely, on the other hand, on the upside market, once we've found our bottom and things start going back up, that's the time to buy your land. That's the time to start creating development projects. 
That's the time, because they take a long time. You gotta take your vision and get with an architect and an engineer and a civil engineer, energy consultants, and design your vision. That's gonna take some time. And once you've got a design, then you typically have to go to the city council and get approval from the government. Then you have to go to a bank and convince them it's a great deal. And meanwhile, you bought this land down here, post bottom, and while you're designing and fixing, by the way, all of those designs, all of that consulting, all of that information that you're putting together, you're taking this vision that you have as an entrepreneur and you're putting it down on paper and you're creating plans to execute. That's adding value, physical value as well. And while that's happening, the value of the land's going up, right? So that's a win-win. And then so at, during this cycle, then you start construction and your value goes up again. You're adding physical value to your project, right? These are long-term development opportunities. Then we get up here and when you, when you hit, depending on where you hit your completion on your development project, you decide, do I sell? And the answer is yes, if you're at the top. The answer might be no, let's refinance, convert your construction financing into a permanent loan and hang on to it for a little while. Enjoy the cash flow, tax benefits, and growth, the momentum of the market until you get up to the peak. Now listen, if you're building apartment buildings, you can, you can pause right there and ride this gravy train of momentum long term. You, the cool thing about income property is the only way you can lose money is to sell it for less than you bought it for. And that's it. The only way that you can lose is by selling it at the wrong time. So if there's no reason, there should be no reason ever that you're forced to sell at any specific time, it's not really possible for you to lose money. But you know what people do? They get stupid. <laughs> they, buy, they buy high and they sell low. They buy high and they sell low. And I, I thank God that we have those sellers because if we didn't have those kind of investors, I wouldn't have gotten where I've gotten. I love it. I'd like to save people from making those mistakes. That's why we're here today. But People do this all the time. We get to the top of the market. I'm a real estate investor. I'm a real estate investor. I'm a real estate investor. And make bad fucking decisions. Bad decisions. Buy, buy full retail price at the top of the market. Bad decision. If you're buying assets that cash flow and adding value and then holding on to them for long term like we do, you can play this game at any stage of this market cycle. Let me repeat that. If you're buying undervalued assets in any market, in any location, in any condition, and you're adding value, taking them from where they are to their highest and best use, and then keeping them for long-term cash flow, tax benefits, and growth, which is exactly what we do, you can do that. You can play this game at any stage of the market cycle. Buying at undervalued assets, adding value, hanging on to them for long-term cash flow, tax benefits, and growth. Any stage of the market cycle, you can play this game. Thanks for watching Matt Skinner TV. This was The Skinny on Market Cycles.